One of the coolest but not bad design we have ever seen comes from the sleepiest app designed by the Kubato Design. To achieve this, we will be using Flutter and an interactive animation tool called Rife. And if you are new here, like and subscribe. Let's have a look at the application. So here, as we can notice that on click, we see an active animation followed by an inactive animation when click on a different app. Now let's dive right into the tutorial. For better understanding, let's first go through the live animation. As we can see here, we have created the active animation, inactive animation along with the active starting state and inactive starting state. Then inside the state machine where all the magic happens, here we combine the animation with variables to create an interactive motion. Like here, we have created a status boolean input which is used in the node as a condition to check which animation to play. Like when the status is true, we play the active animation and if it is false, then it will play the inactive animation. You will find this animation on Rive and feel free to play with it. To download this animation, go to the Flutter UI Dev Rive account. Here open any animation and when you scroll down, you will find the download button. Now here I have already downloaded all the 5 animations and placed them inside the asset folder. And also make sure to add the asset path inside the pubspec.ml file along with the Rive dependency. Now inside a new Dart file, create a stateful widget. Here we first create a variable named input which is a list of state machine input of type bool. Then below it create a list of artboard where the artboard is like a canvas where we create the designs as well as the animation. And then create a list of asset path and add path of all the 5 animation in it. Then create the current active index variable to keep track of the active tab and initialize it to 0. Now as our animation contains a state machine which requires a few steps to do first and we will be doing them inside this initialize artboard method. Inside it we will first add a for loop to loop through the asset path. In it we will add the root bundle and make sure to import the flutter services and then we will load the asset by passing its respective path and then passing the data to the variable and below it we will call the write files.import and pass the data variable to it. Now create the artboard variable and pass it files.main artboard. Now this will contain the designs as well as the animation details. Now below it let's create the state machine input variable which we will be using in just a moment but before that let's create the controller from the artboard method which takes the artboard variable along with the state machine name which is required to be exact same as the one we have defined in the Rive web app. Then below it we will check that if the controller is not null. In it first we will need to add the state machine variable to our artboard. Now to find the status boolean variable which we have created in the Rive web app, we can use the state machine controller. Just call the find input and give it a type of bool and give it the variable name which in our case is status. And below it call the input dot value and give it a value of true. And lastly add this input variable to our inputs list that we have created at the start. And similarly add the artboard to the list of artboards. And then as our final step I promise that call the date change dependency lifecycle method. Make sure to make it a sync. Then inside it call the initialize artboard method and make sure to await it. And below it call the set state method. Now for the UI part we are going to keep the thing simple. So inside the build method add a scaffold with a body of center and pass a child of row and give it a main axis alignment of space evenly. Inside the children's pass artboard.map and make sure to call to list at the end. Now inside the map method firstly we will get the indexed by calling the indexed of method and giving it the current artboard. Then we will return a bottom app bar widget which will take an artboard current index which will be our current active indexed then tap indexed then a state machine input at a given index and then finally an on press callback and inside it we will call the set state to set the current active index to the given index. Now the only thing remaining is this bottom app per item widget. So let's create a stateless widget and then inside it create an artboard property and on press callback current indexed tap indexed and state machine input. Now inside the build method firstly we will check that if the input is not equal to null and if so then we will assign the input dot value to current index equal equal to tap indexed and then below it we will return a size box with width and height of 100 pixels and then give it a child of gesture detector. In it pass the on press callback and inside it child we will check that if the artboard is equal equal to null and if so then we will pass a size box 
and if not then we will pass the ripe widget with the given artboard. And that's it for this video, we will see you in the next one.